do is ask for declarations of interest. Councillors, you ask if anybody ever disclosable, jewelry, or any other relevant interest. And if you could, stating that interest, uh, be fair to the item as well. Thank you. There aren't any declarations of interest. Is that okay? Moving on. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda are Mayor's announcements. I'll be extremely brief. Uh, I have been informed of two other uh, apologies. I have Tracy Smith, John Hale, I also have Councillor Leah Brenda and Paul Hayes. Are there any other apologies for absence? Okay, thank you for that. Okay, Mayor's announcements. I would firstly really like to uh, welcome our nine newly elected members. I uh, hope they enjoy their time uh, as an elected member. As I said during my uh, bail acceptance speech, um, I will be counting in the role of councillors, and I think it's important, whilst welcoming the new councillors, it's actually fair to put on record our gratitude to those who didn't uh, return for whatever reason, either through the uh, electoral results or people, many people stood down. So I would ask, with the uh, permission of the council, that I write to them as mayor, thank them for the service they've given to this authority. <laughs> okay, the other thing I'd like to say is uh, well done to everybody and the attendance at Council of Cape Woods funeral. So it was a very, very apt send off for a great politician and, and a great friend to many others in this room. Uh, congratulations to everyone who, who made the effort. And the other issue is uh, a couple of dates for your diary. We've got a bit of script. Uh, you will notice there is no chaplain. There will be no chaplain at council meetings throughout the year. However, we will be holding a civic Sunday, and that will be at St. James's Church on the 10th of August, 10.30 a.m. So St. James is in the heart of North Edinburgh, in Edinburgh, of course, I'll be very pleased if, if members can come on and attend that. Another one for your diary is the charity ball, Mayor's Charity Ball at Dawson Hall on the 17th of October. So many of us have one there for. So that is the end of uh, Mayor's announcements. Moving on, uh, we have this agenda book that is quite confusing. It's done in, in, uh, in all day, but does be fair to the item. So if I keep saying the wrong number, check on me. Item 8 on the agenda are there any petitions to councillors which to present? Um, okay. I've got Councillor Anderson and Councillor Cadbury. I'll just check on the details now. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you, Councillor Bailey. Okay, so Tom, uh, Jim, and Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a petition on behalf of 107 residents of Greasy Family and Airby opposing the Labour Party's cruel cut to the Irish Council that they were sent to. Take that. Okay. 
do all that. Okay, we're here now on item 10, which is page 23 to 23 to 24 of the supplement. And the council is now requested to know the results of the election of the 27th of May. Is that agreed? Thank you. 
as we read it. I would suggest if, if, if that's uh, a way forward uh, in the future, I would suggest that we have one overall debate um, with the, uh, all the items being moved. If it's in agreement with the Conservative group, um, their agendas, their amendments will both be moved simultaneously, so we'll move and second them uh, as, as joint. Obviously, votes will be taken separately on those amendments. I uh, will be very meeting with the time as we are speaking to amendments uh, on, on the, the, the way we go forward. Is that agreed that we, under the appropriate standing order, deal with debate in, in that fashion? Agreed. Agreed, okay. So I will uh, formally, uh, as I understand, the leader then will have the right to reply. I know we will take each amendment in turn and vote. Uh, can I invite Councillor Gilchrist to move and speak to his amendment first? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You come to explain the reasoning behind this. Do you remember at the meeting, Mr. Mayor, I referred to the Constitution? That doesn't mean that I sit there reading it every night or in bed, but I've decided to look at the Constitution to see exactly what it says about the policy and performance committees. And I found in that that they were to foster and encourage an inclusive structure, non-partisan and non-adversarial uh, approach to overview of scrutiny. So I thought this is a wonderful, charming new initiative building on that shared <coughs> experience. So I thought a little bit more detail on what they're supposed to do. They were to subject decisions of the executive to appropriate but rigorous scrutiny and also there's another section about sufficient and timely scrutiny. Because to have all that going on, uh, also has to have regard to how things get on the agenda and how determined and independent-minded the chair is. I know the leader has expressed the view, I've reported in the newspapers that his party won the election during seats, and that's it, thanks very much. But I want to refer back to some of the considerations of the improvement board. Remember, those well-meaning people came in from outside and gave us advice and listened to what we had to say, came up with advice to us. Uh, it's said in their, one of their reports. It's crucial that the council embeds a shared understanding regarding what behaviours are appropriate when developing relationships internally and externally. Without clear and focused activity to improve the culture within the council, the improvement measures strategies and plans which are in place will not be sustainable. So given uh, the expressed view of the leader, I wonder whether the new atmosphere is as sustainable as it might be. I have looked carefully at what Councillor Green and the colleagues have to say about the families and well-being issue. And that indeed was an issue that had raised the leader's board and also was touched on by the improvement board. Because they said last November, Members have been very engaged in the process. And initial feedback is mostly positive. Although concerns have been raised about the size of the scope for the families of well-being policy and support. So there is a thread, an anxiety that has stemmed back over some months, and it is something that my colleagues who were closely involved with families of well-being, like Council Pat Williams, well understood. But I have to ask, what has changed? What has really changed since last time? Because in the room of blows on October the 30th, there was an item, political leaders clashing on making the council more open. It was Councillor Green, Councillor Davis. But Councillor Davis was at the time, shall we say, being pillaged by Councillor Green, all those calls about taking the power themselves. Was there a risk of that? And Councillor Davis said, no, under the rules, Labour would have chaired all three scrutiny committees, but we have. I have got a Conservative chair on one of them, Liberal Democrats on the other, and we took the third. It's not something I've got to talk about the leaders for. So, if it was all right last October, Mr. Chair, what really has changed? Has this spirit of openness, looking at things, being able to take a few brickbats and do independent research, has that disappeared? Or will it disappear? That's the story. Now, we're not making the paragraph from last night, but we do think that if the chief leader was willing to uh, sit down and say who's combined with each other, and a bit like the American Constitution, we could sit with them and say, okay, Fred, Joe, whatever the name might be, how do you propose to run this? How meaningful will you be? How open to looking at ideas or criticism or going into detail? 
know, don't be away from the sun not going up. Because at the moment it's there, we're a little capsule, rather weird, and I'd eventually my amendment, the fear of a sliding backwards is always on the horizon. I remember the very senior officer said to us, oh, a year or so ago, don't worry about everything, leave it to us, we'll manage the finances, we'll go to the books, we'll sort it out. And that's the current thing. The object was, let the officers and the leadership get on with things. And if it went wrong, well, you could always hold this to account. Mr. Mayor, we want to be sure that the holding to account for this is as open and transparent as possible while we're looking at this one. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. Uh, Pat, do you call me to second that? Call me to second that. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Williams. Uh, okay, so Councillor Green to move his to amend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And before I start, can I add my congratulations to all the new members of the council and also the, the new uh, cabinet members. It's going to be, uh, I'm not sure what it's probably a shame, really, it's not happening how we're in the cabinet uh, for a whole series of, uh, of reasons, but no doubt um, it might be able to change his attitude to potholes and whether we're all happy. the nature of the 